Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Our special guest, like I said, Diana Muller. She who will not comply. She's joining us if you haven't heard. If you haven't heard about this, you should have heard. And then she's also a competitive shooter. She's really nice. She can rock a Benelli. She can rock a Benelli. <laughs> uh, you know, I heard about that. We also have Joanna of Latina Locked and Loaded joining us. Um, there you go. It's ladies' night officially. Officially, it's ladies' night. Except for me and Walter, you know, yeah. we're, we're, we're here. But, you know, we're not as awesome as the ladies. There you go. Walter Keller, he's here also. Safety <laughs> Harbor Firearms. Makers. So Lola wanted me to introduce all you guys. So Joanna is from Latina Locked and Loaded. And uh, Joanna, tell the folks out there real quick what you do, just in case uh, they know. I do grassroots activism for the Second Amendment and okay. try to destigmatize uh, gun ownership in the female and minority communities. Awesome. Very nice. And uh, Diana, if you'd like to tell the folks a little bit about yourself, I know you're you're the you're the founder of the DC project, right? Yeah, I'm gonna want to know everything about you because I'm gonna need uh, <laughs> yeah. but you. With the oh, Latino not me. No, I, that's awesome. I yes, yes, I appreciate you, but uh, <laughs> no, I understand. That's like something that fits right into the DC project, uh, mm -hmm. and that's women for gun rights. Basically, we're trying to be the counter red shirts of Moms Demand Action. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's a really good thing because, you know, um, how, do, how should I put this? There's other folks out there who um, try to paint a picture, let's say, of what gun okay. owners are. They try to paint a very limited picture, and it's great. It's great. To, if I can help you guys out in any way, please let me know. We had Rhonda Ezel actually on last week. Yep. And that was awesome. Um, I think maybe Rhonda helped us. I don't know. If she, I think she helped us connect to you. Or maybe it was John Crump. I don't know. Wanna, let's just give everyone credit for that. Exactly. Yeah. That's, I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. We're glad to have you here. Walter, did you want to... Uh, oh, you want to tell everyone what you do, Walter? What oh, do mayhem. you do? Nothing but mayhem. Yeah. So mayhem Walter... and shenanigans. <laughs> so, uh, Diana, Joanna, should I, t should I tell them what you do? or you, you can... Sure, you can do it. You, you so, can... jo uh, Walter has a company called Safety Harbor Firearms. One of the things he's most known for, he makes a 50 BMG upper that goes on an AR-15 lower. Ooh. So, you can, get, you can get into a you know, 50 relatively affordably. He makes stocks and things like that. Is it, am I correct here, Walter? Oh, yeah. We've been, yeah, uh, stocks for street bugs, CZ Scorpions, MP5s, MP5K, right. um, AR-15, stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. All that awesome stuff. Yeah. So, there you go. All right. So, let's see. Let's get into it with the folks here. We've got, we've got Diana here um, for about an hour. I think she has some other stuff going on. Uh, but we appreciate you taking the time, Diana, uh, and, and coming on here on the show. Um, you know, I think the whole gun world saw when you were, appeared in front of Congress, you know, and you were talking to those folks out there, uh, straightening them up on a couple of things. One, the 5.7 pistol. I, uh, <laughs> you know. Huh? Yeah, uh, yeah, they call it the 57. <laughs> I, we're all about education at the DC project, so I had to take the opportunity to correct her. So, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, the five seven, she did. Bitch. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. Which is the point of having the DC project is, you know, really to offer an education piece to these legislators that are making some really big decisions when it comes to our Second Amendment in our country. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, and, and you know, it's funny that you start with that because that's not in my nature. I'm not like a you know, I'm not a real heavy. Don't tread on. I deep down inside, I'm a real heavy. Don't deep, don't tread on me. But mm -hmm. on the surface, I'm very much. Uh, I want to get along with everybody, and I want to invite more people into the fold. So I don't. I don't do it with vinegar. I try to do it with sugar. And uh, so when I said that, um, you know, basically this was an assault weapons ban hearing. They they wanted to reinstate the assault weapons ban, and uh, I just simply was speaking from my gut, and I was like, you know, listen, you guys have already turned me into a felon. 
by uh, and making me decide between whether I was going to give up my bump stocks and um, and or comply with their law. And I, and I just simply said, I don't want to comply with an assault weapons ban, and I would not. So I had no idea at the time that I said it. I didn't plan on saying it. I had so much good stuff. I worked and worked and <laughs> had so much good stuff. They only gave, did they really only give you, because I know when I was looking at that again today, and you guys, can, if you haven't seen this, you can just uh, Google Diana Muller, and you're going to see what we're talking about here. Uh, you could put shall not comply in there if you want to. Did they really give you like 26 seconds? Well, no, no, no. That was just that was response. one response. Okay. It's kind of a game. You know, everybody gets five minutes in the beginning mm -hmm. um, uh, to, to do their opener. You can submit an unlimited amount of words. So mm -hmm. I had like, you know, five pages worth of stuff that I wanted to say. Uh, and then I scrunched that down to five minutes. So then they get into going back and forth, the volleys of whether it be um, a Republican asking a question or a Democrat asking a question. Of course, the den it's all teeing people up for answers that they want to hear. So the Democrats would, an would ask the anti-people questions and then the Republicans would ask uh, the two of us, two of seven people were uh, pro-constitutionalists and uh, they would kind of tee us up. So then you only have so many, so much time. Like uh, if it's, it was Congressman Andy Biggs out of uh, Arizona that, that had the time, and he only has so much time. He can mm -hmm. ask different questions, but he only had 26 seconds left, and that's when he... Uh, okay, that's what he ceded to you so that just, you could respond, I guess. And I had 26 seconds left on his time. Mm -hmm. So it's a mm -hmm. big Yeah, <laughs> I was very amused by seeing his thing there, Mr. Biggs. Mr. Biggs. Yeah, it reminded me of a James Bond movie, but uh, you know that was that's or, cool. or or Wayne's World. Wayne's World. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so give us the setup of that uh, of how you wound up there. I don't know if that was your first time uh, talking to Congress or not. I've definitely never done that. And then in the background of all of that, I noticed one of my friends, Antonia Okafor. Yeah. Was in the so, background. So how did that happen? The DC project's been going to uh, Washington DC for about four years now. Mm -hmm. And we have a really tight relationship with National Shooting Sports Foundation. And it was through them that they kind of maneuvered. They knew that uh, the ranking member was Doug Collins out of Georgia and that his office was looking for people to testify. So they kind of threw my name in the hat and uh, Congressman Collins' office chose me and uh, the other gal from the Heritage Amy Swear, and she's just awesome. And uh, we were both selected and, and had the great honor and privilege of um, basically representing a, a lot of gun owners on Capitol Hill. But that was definitely the first time that I'd ever been bestowed such an opportunity, and uh, I felt the weight of the world for sure. Yeah. Um, so if you if you don't mind, also give us like some of your qualifications before this, because I think you are very qualified. I believe you have a background in law enforcement, competitive shooting, um, yeah. all these kinds of things. Right. I was a police officer in Tulsa, Oklahoma for 22 years. Uh, I retired in 2014, 2014 and to pursue basically another career as a professional shooter. I shoot three gun, which is rifles, pistols, and shotguns. It's a timed event, so we're running around with our hair on fire, trying to be as fast and accurate as possible. It's kind of the X games of the shooting sports. And then, uh, and, and through that, through you know moving into the firearm space and um, seeing what was happening on Capitol Hill, uh, I, I just becoming concerned or more aware as, as we get older of what's going on in politics. And uh, that's when I started the DC project. And at first it was just one woman from every state I, because I knew as an Oklahoman, I only had standing in Oklahoman. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I started trying to gather women from all over the place. And at first I thought it was gonna be a professional shooter type deal because we're easy to vet, we're easy to you know follow, we know, they know we're not crazy. And uh, but I think God had a bigger plan for it. And now I have a handful of professional shooters. But for the most part, I have a, a true diverse uh, cross section of America and, and, and gun owners. So it turned out to be a lot better than I had originally planned. Awesome. 
So, uh, and by the way, if uh, Joanna, Walter, if you guys have any questions, feel free to jump in here. Um, so this, this, this line, I, you know, I won't comply. Did you plan that? Is it just like, you know, just in, in the process of answering there that came out? How'd that happen? Well, if you watch the whole hearing, about an hour before I said it, there was a gentleman that um, had a, it, you know how people disrupt courtrooms and things like that, and they get escorted out. Well, it took forever for him to get escorted out, and he had a constitution in his hand, and he said, I want to testify, I will not comply, or we will not comply, or shall not comply, some kind of, uh, will not comply. It took so long that I turned around and actually visually saw his shirt that says, uh, shall not comply or something like that. Mm -hmm. So when you hear me say the words, I'll say, I'll reference him. And I said, like the gentleman who got escorted out earlier, I will not comply. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where it came from. But it was nowhere in, in my, um, in my nature. And I didn't say it out of disrespect. I just said it out of a constitutionality that I believe that what they were trying to do is unconstitutional. Yeah. So how long did it take there before you realized that was a viral kind of deal? Because from my standpoint in the gun community, I all of a sudden started getting all these texts and messages of, did you see what this woman said? <laughs> She's amazing. You have to get her on the show. You got to figure out, find her. Well, it took it took me about uh, 0 0.03 seconds to look up and see Jerry Nadler's face like, I had just dropped a bomb and happened. That's what I was going to ask you. What, yeah. Their reactions. Yeah. yeah. Because they're, they're, they're so pompous and correct, you know, all the time. It's so, yeah. really shocked. And had I thought about wanting to say that, I don't think it, I would have chosen to, but uh, mm -hmm. it's just kind of how it rolled out. And, uh, and it did. So uh, I was like, ooh, maybe I went too far. But, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I don't no, think I, no, you, for not. You have to. I mean, these people. It's, it's that mode like you're going to go into their little their little chambers and you have to be a good little girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah. And what, what do they do when they get out of their chambers? They rant and rave and accuse and talk and tell lies. So mm -hmm. they, need be, they need to be You didn't play that. by the script. No, they right. definitely you, you didn't expect you it. You, did, you, didn't, you didn't cower down and go, oh, okay, send it. Right. I, and I stand on what I said. I'm not, uh, I'm not taking it back by any means. It's just you know, when you think about saying that in that forum uh, you realize uh, how kind how kind of a viral moment it was but that's not that was not my intention it was a kind of a genuine deal yeah absolutely make sure to check out hankstrange.com you can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts